Hey everybody, Andrew here from Go Green Compost, and today I am getting ready to plant some of these sunchokes that I just picked up, some of these sunchoke tubers. In my never-ending quest to add some additional perennial edibles to my landscape here, and I'm going to be growing these in containers. I'm probably going to just be using these fabric pots. I like these because they're easy to move around the yard, so you don't get uh, stuck in one spot. They got handles, they're real light, and when you want to pack them up and you're not using them, you can just fold them up. So I really like these fabric pots. I'm going to be doing five sunchoke tubers, so I need to fill five of these up with soil. And believe it or not, these hold quite a bit of dirt. So I've got some organic potting mix and some peat moss and some vermiculite and some black cow manure to build a potting mix for these sunchokes. But I'm also going to be using some of my own compost. And I'm glad I am because when you start a project like this and you start having to build soil, you realize all of these inputs, the cost can really add up. And so if you can uh, fill a portion of your containers for your container garden with your own compost, you'll save some money. And also, I think the final product that you'll get will be superior as well. Because if you're making your own compost at home and you're doing it the right way, the compost is going to lend a lot of microbial life to your soil. It'll have fungi and uh, protozoa, beneficial bacteria. Basically, it's a probiotic for your uh, potting mix. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know I have a bunch of these geo bins. I've got five of these things um, in my backyard making compost. So I've opened one of them up. I've removed the geo bin liner from this pile right here. And I thought you might be interested to see what you get inside of your geo bin. Now, I don't keep real detailed records about what I've been doing with my compost. Um, basically, I just keep adding food scraps. Um, I get some from local restaurants. I get some coffee grounds. I use my own food scraps. Uh, and also, I add some brown material. So every now and then, I'll get a chip drop. Um, sometimes I'll be out collecting leaves from my neighbor's curb in my wheelbarrow and getting funny looks. I'll use grass clippings from my own yard, uh, dried out ones, that sort of thing. So I just alternate layers of browns and greens in these basically and just let them cook down. It's probably been at least six months since I last turned these piles. So this is what you get. And if you can see on the top here, the material is definitely not composted yet. This is both basically just some uh, dry wood chips on this level. But I think as we go in more, it'll be a little bit more moist and there will be some more finished compost or partially finished compost. A lot of this stuff that's not composted at all is just going to go right back into the other geo bins. I'm going to go ahead and start getting into this pile and then once I'm maybe about halfway through I'll come back and we'll see what we got. Okay guys so I barely got one scoop in and I just wanted to show you this. Um, I know the exterior of the pile looks like just these dry wood chips but this is what I saw as soon as I went one pitchfork in was just this writhing mass of worms so there's definitely a lot of life going on in this pile there's definitely a lot of composting going on and that many worms to me is a good sign I'm gonna keep going and we'll see what else we find okay so I've pitchforked out some of the material from the edge and we're getting more towards the core of the pile here and I'll give you guys a few uh, close-up shots. So just gonna give you guys an up-close view of what's going on inside the compost pile here. I'm just gonna kind of scrape things away and I think you'll see that there's um, probably a lot of little critters and stuff we're gonna find. Looks like this is maybe some cardboard that was in here. It's completely decaying into just nothing. It's crumbling in my fingers. Very moist, must have been some cardboard boxes. It's almost completely converted just into a humusy material. Plants will definitely like that. You saw that big bundle of worms earlier. Here are some, looks like black soldier fly larvae. Those guys are voracious eaters, so I always like to see them in the compost heap. They will just tear up some kitchen scraps in no time at all. They serve as food for other critters around here, or they just turn into flies and fly off and come back and lay some more eggs and they help me digest some more waste. So either way, it's a win-win. The black soldier flies themselves don't bite. They don't spread any diseases or anything. So they're definitely a helpful little critter you want around. Got some uh, pill bugs in here, roly polies. Those guys are pretty good at digesting carbon rich material like that cardboard and the wood chips that are in here. So they're definitely helping produce some good soil. As we get lower, it's even more humusy. There is quite a bit of sand, it seems like in this this layer, that's probably a layer of just some native soil that I dumped in. But as I pitchfork this stuff and turn it, it's all gonna get mixed up into just a nice, well-draining, nutrient-rich, microbe-rich, 
humus material that will definitely encourage good plant root growth and healthy roots and healthier overall plants. All right, I was doing a little more digging and I reached another area that seems to be fairly rich in worms. You can see them squirming around here. They're all sliding down the side of this compost now that I've excavated part of the area. See, there's a lot of these uh, black soldier flies here too. This must be a pocket of fairly recently added food scraps, maybe some particularly moist ones. Um, but there's lots of creepy crawlies in here and that's a good sign because uh, you want biologically active soil. And it's interesting how you'll just come into pockets of things like these worms and you know it's basically just like a giant vermiculture setup in a way. I mean these native worms, at least I'm assuming these are native worms, probably aren't as efficient at turning waste into uh, castings as maybe say a red wiggler. They're still quite active and you know, for all I know, these may actually be some red wigglers that somehow got in here from my vermicompost system. I'm sure I've thrown some worm castings in the compost bins at some point, and that's probably all it would take to establish a population of those guys in these bins. But uh, there's tons of worms in most of these bins. I think when they really heat up, they probably don't like the high, high temperatures, but they probably just hang out around the periphery of the bin where it's a little bit cooler, and they munch on the food scraps much the same way that they would munch on them in a worm bin. Just some more signs of life here in the compost. Interesting stuff, glad to have these little guys helping me out and converting this waste into soil. As you can see, we're getting into more of like a dark brown, moist, humusy material. And that's what I'm gonna be collecting and uh, adding to my potting mix. And I've got a bunch of it shoveled into my wheelbarrow here. And you can kind of take a look at the quality of this. There's still some whole leaves and stuff in there. It may appear a little bit sandy. That's probably because I've incorporated some of my own native soil into this stuff, which is a bit sandy. Like if I dig a hole to plant a tree in, I'll usually just dump that dirt right into the compost heap. Uh, but this should be real good for sun choke. Sun chokes like well-draining soil. And having some sand in the mix will definitely assist with that. This is pretty good stuff. I'm really glad to have this uh, volume of material from my geobin. And there's going to be more that I can scoop out here in just a few minutes, uh, but that's really going to be a helpful addition to my pots. It'll help me build a larger volume of soil, and I believe that that will also increase the microbial activity in my soil and lead to healthier plants in the long run. And I'm pretty excited about the sun chokes. Um, I'll, I might do a video showing the progress of those as they grow over time, but it seems like an interesting plant, one that I had recommended to me by a few people on a permaculture Facebook group I participate in, Permaculture Jacks. If you're from Northeast Florida, you should check that group out. That's what you get when you open up your geo bin. If you're thinking about doing some uh, pile composting, think about getting a geo bin. I think they're really great. They make managing your compost easy. And what I'm going to do now is take some more of this material, scoop it into my wheelbarrow, get enough to fill those pots up with those other ingredients, and then everything else will just uh, get scooped to the side. I'll reassemble the geo bin and just fill it back up and start the process all over again. You know, I mentioned that I have five of these geo bins. The reason that I selected this specific compost heap to pull some compost from today is because I just had an amazing volunteer tomato grow right out of the side of this thing. We had a tomato come out of the side of the geo bin, grew through just one of those little holes, and I staked it around the bin, and it produced a huge crop of tomatoes. I mean, tons of little cherry tomatoes right off of that little volunteer plant, and they tasted very good. So, based on that information, I assume that this soil must at least be partially finished and of somewhat good quality because it grew a fantastic tomato plant. And that may sound like kind of an odd way to assess the quality of any given compost heap, but to me it's just sort of an intuitive method. It was sort of like the compost telling me, hey, I'm ready, look, I'm ready to grow some food. So that's why I'm pulling from this one today. All right guys, this is the last thing I'm gonna show you out of the bin. I was just forking a little bit more out into the wheelbarrow and I found this, basically a brick of worms. This thing is just a squirming mass. It's like a solid brick, just composed almost entirely of worm-filled compost. This guy, I'm gonna move into one of my other bins and hopefully these worms will colonize. I think they're probably all colonized with these worms at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and move this just as it is into one of these other bins here so that these worms can find a new home 
and some more food scraps to munch on. Say bye, worms. Bye, guys. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see another great composting video, then check out this one right here, and I'll catch you next time. Andrew from Go Green Compost, out.